Hey everybody, welcome to LettermanRow.com. I am Jeremy Birmingham. This is Bermanology. We are visiting today with Toriano Pride, a 2022 four-star cornerback from Lutheran North High School in St. Louis. One of Ohio State's top targets at the position and a player that uh, in the last few months has started to have a little bit of buzz going about his recruitment. And I figured it would make more sense for us to just talk to him about it directly as opposed to listening to rumors. So Toriano, thanks for joining us. How you doing, bud? Hey, I'm doing good. I'm doing real good. I'm going to start there, okay, if you don't mind. Uh, you know, in the last couple months, and this is the way that the industry works right now. It's kind of uh, kind of weird, I guess. You know, we, we see a crystal ball come in, right? One crystal ball, mm -hmm. one prediction, and then all of a sudden the world, ever, everyone thinks that your college decision is made. Uh, that right. That is not correct. Right. So – where are you? I mean, if you were to to take a broad view of your recruitment, where would you say you are right now? How how close are you to a decision? Um, I'm not really close at all because out of out of my top seven that I recently posted, I've only visited one in person, and the other six I have I've never met the coaches in like face to face, and that's a big part of my decision because I plan on uh. Wherever I go, I got to be able to, like, get to campus and I got to meet the coach face to face because everything sounds good over the phone. How do you separate what's real from what's not in, in these sort of Zoom conversations and FaceTime conversations? How 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 good are you and, and who's guiding you, I guess, at, at sorting this out? Um. Well, first, you got to – I mean, really, you just got to – just hope to tell the truth because any, anybody can try to sell you over the phone. Like, even if – even if they're being honest, if they're not, you, you would never know because it's over the phone. And my dad, he he plays a big part in it. He helps me because um he was a big uh, – he was a really good athlete coming out of high school. He didn't have the, as as big of offers, but, like, he's been recruited heavily before, so – yeah, so that top seven, uh, if you want, wouldn't mind running that down the list for me, we know that there's uh, Ohio State, Clemson, Alabama. Who else is on that list for you? Um, Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, Oregon, um, Auburn, Georgia, and Missouri. So when you look at that list, you are ranked as the country's number 14 cornerback. I mean – you're you're considering offers from all those places and thirty some more. Do ranking mm -hmm. do rankings just have it completely wrong, or do they just not matter? You, you are you you saying are they wrong? Yeah, I mean, how, how are you ranked number fourteen at your position with an offer list like yours? I feel I'm 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 I feel a person I'm the best DB in my class at twenty two, but you know the people they they're gonna put whatever because I. I feel that's way too, way too high for me because I, I know for sure I'm not the 14th in the country in my position, but especially with the like the schools I have, cause I'm like Alabama, like the biggest name schools. I don't know. So, so of that you know, top seven, too. of that top seven, you said you've only visited one. You have been to Ohio State. Yes, I have. So you you were there what three separate times, if I recall correctly. Yes. How do you think that a visit now would be different than those three trips? What do you think would be more valuable about a visit now? Just the opportunity to meet with the coaches or to, to be there as the primary focus of the recruiting visit? Um, probably what makes a big difference is my age because the three times I've been there, I was – I've the recently time I've been there, it, I didn't get to see anybody. I just was back on campus and stuff for a camp. But – uh. It would probably make a big difference now because I get to see the coaches and stuff, like meet Coach Coons and Coach Day instead of FaceTiming. Is there, you know, a plan for you at all? I mean, I know a lot of kids in your class are doing the self-guided tour thing, and I know that you've seemed reluctant to do that, and you're kind of waiting it out to 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 see when the official visits are allowed. If mm -hmm. if the dead period gets pushed back again, God forbid, and, and goes through July or whatever. What do you do? How, do? how does that change things for you? Um, that's a good question. Um, we, I would have to sit down and talk to my dad because just like the uh, first time they pushed it back, we planned on, I think, going to April to hitting up all the schools because um, I don't I don't plan on committing late. I want to be like an early commit 
and commit before my senior season, before my first game. But uh, really, I, I really wouldn't know what I would do if they push it back again because I guess I'm going to just probably – I think I'll just have to wait even longer because I don't plan on going anywhere where I've never been on campus in the facilities or met, met my position coach well, face-to-face. Which totally makes sense. And it's it's kind of crazy to me how many kids are making the decision right now without doing that. But mm-hmm. um, right. you know as well as anyone, Ohio State has become pretty popular in the St. Louis area in the last handful of years mm-hmm. going back to Ezekiel Elliott. And you, you, mm-hmm. you've, you're close with uh, Jamison Williams and Mookie Cooper. Uh, Mookie obviously has left the program. How much does that impact things for you? I mean, you're talking one, – you, the one you're closest with is Mookie. And – I mean, do you get a different sense or a different uh, idea of what Ohio State might be from him, or, or is his situation just an outlier because you know his position was so stacked? Uh, one thing I really just look at is every person you name, like all the people from St. Louis that went to Ohio State. Like, I think it's six of them, uh, not not including me, but it's probably like Cam Cameron Brown, Cam Babb, Jameson Williams, Lukey. Uh, Ja'Kalen Johns, all of us, we're all different people. Like, we're all wired different. We all come from different situations. So, like, I can't really base what Mookie says. That, like, even if he's talked down, like, I, I would never base it off of, off of that because if I base it off of that, then why is Jameson Williams starting? So, like, you're, like everybody's situation is different. Mate. I don't know what happened exactly with, with Mookie. If, I don't know if he wasn't doing the right thing or playing time or he just didn't like it. But I I would never look at one person's like point of view. I, I try, I'm the type of person I like to figure it out myself. One thing that I think you guys have in common, and especially you and, J- and J.K. Johnson, who has not yet – you know, stepped on campus at Ohio State as an actual uh, student. He, he's waiting till June to enroll. Is that the comparison mm-hmm. that I've heard and the, the word I've heard about your game is that you guys are, quote, dogs on the field, right? You, you yeah. uh, mm-hmm. I, I've seen other interviews with you and from talking to you, you seem like a pretty low key guy off the field. Where do you get that side of you when you step between the lines? I, I mean, I don't. I don't know, cause uh, really, but the only thing I think about is like on the field. I just want to win, and I just want to beat the person in front of me. And I, I hate losing, cause I, I don't feel like getting embarrassed. None of that. So like, I just want to. I want to embarrass the person across from me. Like I just want to knock them down at every single play. How much has it helped you as a defensive back to play wide receiver? It's been helping me a lot because, like, the steps you take for wide receiver, like, that I'm learning, I'm learning as a DB. Is like, so I'm like, oh, so this is how wide receivers do slants or how they perfect their fade route or, or out route. And as a DB, I just, just, just uh, enhance it all. You played six games in your junior season. If you were – you know, somebody on the outside looking in, how would you evaluate the way you played? Where, where where did you make the biggest leaps after your sophomore year? And where do you see that you still have the biggest room to improve? Um, I've improved a lot from my sophomore, from my junior, but uh, I've improved from being like more of a student of the game, like learning more of the defense and the calls and stuff like that and the route concepts the receivers ran. I've been got a lot, of, a lot stronger. And faster, I feel, um, and quicker. But there's there's still a lot of things I can work on going into my senior year, and um, I just that's why I'm going grinding right now, just trying to get better than last year. I know we've talked a little bit about it already with the Zoom calls and that kind of stuff, and you you sort of get a different side of people, I think, than you do in person, but. You know, what has been your impression of Kerry Combs, of Ryan Day, of Matt Barnes, if you talk to him? Like, what have you felt from the Ohio State staff, and, and what is it that they're telling you that makes them one of those top schools for you? Um, I I, I really like them because they made me feel like a priority. Um, I, when I talk to them, I could, I could tell they're not selling me a drink. Coach Combs is probably one of the realest dudes I could talk to. He just keeps it a hundred with me. Uh, and like the players, he's like the 
future players he's developed, like the players he's recently developed, the like the years before bit like this year, it, he puts a lot of guys into the league. Um, he has really good coaching experience. He's been in the play. I mean, coach for the Titans. So he's coached at the highest level. So he'll know what it takes to be a great, great DB. And so I like, I just like his resume. Is there a relationship that you've been able to start forming with any of the guys in the Ohio State class? I know that as a group, they're very active and very talkative. Uh, who has really stepped up or, or, you know, become close with you from that group? Um, I've really got like very close with them, but I've I've communicated with a lot of them. Uh, I'm I'm actually in a group chat with them, in a, a real big group chat. Uh, they don't really they really I, like they don't really like talk me into coming. All the, like they always say like come home, come home. This is the place to be. But uh, it's like Quinn Edwards, Caleb Burton, Desan, C J Hicks. And I think it's somebody. I think it's somebody named Mari or something like that. Yeah, so. that group is an interesting thing. It's funny actually to hear the recruits and the commits in it talk about which kids don't talk. Like, I spent the weekend in, in uh, you know, recently in New Orleans and getting to know Jaheim Singletary a little bit. And Jaheim's in that group chat and never says a word. And, you know, he's committed and yeah. is an interest yeah, in yeah. anywhere else. Yeah, I, I, I don't say a word in me either. Like, it's, it's, a certain, it's a certain amount of people because it's a lot. Of, it's like, because not everybody in the group chat are, um, are committed to Ohio State because it's a lot. It's really a lot. Just a whole bunch of top recruits in it, and like it's the same amount of people that say something in it. Like, like a lot of people just view what they say. Toriano, what do you do when, with your free time? How how does a guy who is you know um, trying to become a, a a college all American and a future NFL player spend his off time? Um, just perfecting my craft, training, uh, doing a lot of field work. Uh, Trying to get faster, stronger, and um, other than that, just chill, hang out with friends, and I personally like to uh, watch movies and stuff. So one of, nothing too much. One of your coaches told me that I needed to ask you if you've ever run five miles. Uh, <laughs> yes, I have. I've, we've ran, I've run five miles plenty of times at practice. Is that a problem? When I first got there, it was a problem, but I'm used to it now. So, what's the fastest you've run five miles in? Now that I don't know, because he does our coach. He doesn't time us, but he he makes sure. But before we leave to go home, we have to do twenty laps. So, yeah, that sounds miserable. Terrible. Who who's the music in the earphones when you're warming up? Who who are you listening to? Little baby. What number do you wear and why? I wear number five. I really my favorite number is number three, but I transferred from my uh in my freshman year to Luther North my sophomore year, and there was a senior that had number three, so I had to switch to number five, and I've just kept it ever since. Let's say you know right now as you look ahead here over these next few months, I I'm just going to assume Ohio State's one of those spots you know you're going to go to for an official visit. Yeah. Uh, with with a list of seven schools, how do you break down who the other four are? What what really separates someone? Um, well, for the probably separate me separate schools from other schools, like how comfortable how comfortable I feel up there, and like the the feel I get, the vibe, uh, like makes me feel at home. Because because all those schools, basically all those schools except Missoula, are five plus hours away from home, so. This, like I want to feel like home when if I'm at a different if I'm at a school like hours away. Is there a push? I mean, Missouri has done a nice job in the last couple of years of really trying to re rebrand their program and 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 uh, put make themselves a contender in the SEC. Is there any pressure on from folks around your part of the country to stay home? Yeah, it's a lot. It's a, it's a, I think that that's majority of the people uh, telling me to just come stay home. Uh, go to my backyard because Mizzou, Mizzou's forty, not forty, probably like thirty-five minutes from my house. That is a major decision. Obviously, a lot of things go into it. What do you want to mm -hmm. study in in college? If, if football doesn't work out, what is the life for Toriano Pride going to be? Probably business. Do you have a uh, you have a sense of what you want to do? I mean, is there a specific business you feel like? Oh, that's something I I'd be interested in. 
as of right now, it would probably be um, architectural designer. Well, uh, over the next few months, as you get an opportunity to go to Columbus and Tuscaloosa and Clemson, you're going to see some of the, the coolest architecture you've ever seen when it comes to football stadiums. So hopefully, oh, yeah. hopefully you get a chance to do that in June. Uh, mm -hmm. On that note, I'm at 15 minutes. I told you I'd keep you between uh, 10 to 12, so I'm a little over, and I apologize. So <laughs> you're good. You're good. That is Toriano Pride. We're going to get out of here on that note. I'm Jeremy Birmingham. This is Bermanology on Letterman Rail. Thanks for watching, everyone.